guys, this is Francesca. Welcome back to Under the Covers. And today I have my January of 2019 book haul for you guys. Now, as usual, these videos can get a little long. I have probably over 50 books to talk about, and I will be talking about digital copies that I got during the month of January. So that's eBooks and audiobooks as well as physical books. And I will try and clearly remember to tell you whether I purchased the books myself or I got them for review from authors or publishers. That being said, if you stick around to the end of the video, there's also going to be a giveaway as I usually do with these book haul videos. So be sure to stick around for that. But without further delays, grab yourself some coffee and let's jump right into it. The first book I got was Raven Song by TJ Klune. This is the second book in the Green Creek series. It's Male Male Shift to Romance. And I got the audiobook for review from the publisher. I purchased the, the first audiobook last year and it's on my list to read very soon. So I didn't get started on the series yet, but I'm really excited to dive more into the series, especially because I've been looking for more shifter romances and especially because it's male male. Also, TJ Klune is an author that I have heard only amazing things about, so I'm really excited to dive in. Next up is also an audiobook, and this one I purchased myself. It's Flirting with Fire by Piper Rain. I wanted to have some options when I get to the fire station on Romansopoli. I have a few that I have marked that I want to read, but this one kept popping up, and I really think it sounds right up my alley. So the hero is a firefighter, obviously. The heroine goes with her friends to a first responders blind date kind of auction, and they bid on this date with her high school crush, who happens to be a firefighter now. I think it sounds really fun, and I may have to use this one when I land on the fire station instead of the ones that are already on my TBR. The next is also an audiobook I bought myself, and that is because I have resolved to, again, read at least two nonfiction books per year, and I want to have some options, and I have a few that are already on my TBR for a while, but this one has been on my radar since it came out, and that is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. I love Trevor Noah, and I can't wait to dive into his book. The next one is also an audiobook that I bought myself, and it's Grave Witch by Alex Kraft. I actually have the ebooks for I think the first three books in this series, but I really wanted to listen to it instead of reading the ebooks. And this is a series that I plan on starting this year. Obviously, it has witches and it has fae. So I'm really excited. It's an urban fantasy series, a little bit older, but it sort of just got put back on my radar because new books have come out in the series since last year. So I'm really excited to finally dive into it. The next I picked up an ebook and audiobook, but well, bought them myself, and it's The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovich. I've been wanting to read this book for a couple of years now. It's been recommended to me, and a lot of people recommend this as something similar to Fence by C.S. Picot. I think that's how you say her name, which I also have not read that author, and it's also on my list. But in case you have, that's sort of what they equate this book to. It is a made-up sport, so it's a cross between lacrosse and soccer, from what I understand. And it is male-male romance, so it's a male-male sports romance. I can't wait to dive into it. Next, I got an ebook copy of Be the Girl by K.A. Tucker. I received this from the author for review, and this is a young adult contemporary. The story centers around bullying and the effects that it has on different people, and it's really eye-opening. I think it's a great thought-provoking book on the subject of bullying, which is a very current issue that I think needs to be talked about. And definitely Kay Tucker does it really well. I love Kay Tucker's writing. I did already post a review for this book. If you're interested to check it out, it's up on the blog. The next is an ebook I got for review from the author, and I believe this is the author's debut novel. It's American Dreamer by Adriana Herrera. And this is the first in the Dreamers series. I think it's perfect if you're looking for a chef or foodie romance. It is male-male romance, and the hero is moving from New York City to upstate New York. He wants to open an Afro-Caribbean food truck, and he feels like it would be much better for him to do that upstate New York, where he would be a big fish in a little pond, and he falls for one of his clients. The next one is an ebook I got for review from the publisher, and it's What the Wind Knows by Amy Harmon. This is one of my most anticipated reads of like the first half of the year. It's historical fiction, and I think it probably sounds a lot like Outlander. So the heroine of this story was always captivated by the stories of Ireland that her grandfather used to tell her. 
So she travels to Ireland to spread his ashes and she finds herself in 1921 Ireland. Of course, there is a love interest. She does fall in love with somebody in that time and then has to make the decision whether she's going to get involved in all the conflict that is going on at that time period or go back to her own life. Amy Harmon is one of those really special authors that can write beautifully lyrical prose, and I can't wait to dive into this story. I believe the physical copy of this book comes out in February, but the ebook and audiobook will be coming out in March. The next one is an ebook I got for review from the publisher, and it's Prisoner of Night by J.R. Ward. This is part of the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. However, it doesn't really have anything to do with the Brotherhood. If you were to read this as a standalone, you probably could. It is just set in the same universe. It doesn't have any crossover kind of characters, and I think that's sort of where it fell flat for me. It started off really intense, and I think it does have good action, but the romance fell a little flat for me. Plus, then there's the fact that you don't really get the brothers or anything related to them, and that I also didn't love. So, up next is actually my first physical copies here and I ended up buying used copies on a books of the Final Prophecy books by Jessica Anderson and they are some of them are pretty like pretty raggedy. The reason why I did that is the Final Prophecy series by Jessica Anderson has been on my TBR for a really long time. I actually own a couple of the books on my shelves and I really wanted to get started this year and when I went to look for the ebooks I couldn't find this series for sale anywhere anymore, so I'm not sure what's going on with the series. It's paranormal romance and it involves Mayan mythology, so I'm really, really interested in reading it and I didn't want to miss out on the opportunity of having the actual physical books just in case there's an issue with the sale of the books. So I went on Apes Books, which is where I tend to get my used copies, so I was able to find everything that I wanted to pick up. So I have Blood Spells by Jessica Anderson, Sky Keepers, Spellfire, Storm Kissed, Night Keepers, which is the first book, and Demon Keepers. Like I said, this has a lot to do with like Mayan mythology, the end of the world, as told in ancient prophecies, Mayan demons, so I really am interested to read something different. And I have read Jessica Anderson before, so I am looking forward to trying this series out. Next up, I got a really cute PR package from a novel take PR, which is a publicist that works with a lot of male male authors. And she did send me a tote bag with some swag in here, as well as a copy of Christmas Lane by Amy Aislinn, which is a Christmas holiday male male romance set in a small town with an age gap May December type romance. I've already posted my review for this on the blog if you want to check it out. And she also sent me Tight Quarters by Annabeth Albert. This is part of the, what's this series called? I think it's the Out of Uniform series. It's male male romance and usually at least one of the characters is in the military. So one of the main characters here is a Navy SEAL and a sharpshooter and the other character is a journalist. Now this one I have not read but I have read some books in this series which I have enjoyed in the past. Next up, I also received a package from an author which had a copy of The Vampire's Temptation and this is by Cecilia Mecca and it also had a cute soap which is called Book Lover and it's from The Soap Librarian. It's a lemongrass bar soap and a candle from Novelly Yours which is called Book Boyfriend. So Vampire's Temptation is on my to-read list very soon. It sounds really interesting. And this story, which actually I think started in her medieval historical romance series, two enemies when they were medieval lords were cursed and that birthed the first vampires back in obviously medieval times. And there is a specific line of humans that can actually kill vampires. And one of those lords has been determined to kill everybody from that line of humans and the other one is set to save them. So now this book starts in obviously present time and it's the story between one of those vampires and a human from that line of humans that can actually kill the vampires. Of course the interesting thing is the one that she ends up with is that one determined to kill her kind. 
Next up is a signed copy of Summon to the 13th Grave by Dorinda Jones. This is one that I had pre-ordered when the author did a signed copy or virtual signing kind of pre-order. This completes my collection of hardcovers of the series. This is the last book in the Charlie Davidson series. Definitely, if you're not reading this series, it's one that I highly recommend. It's urban fantasy with plenty of humor. Great characters, great writing. I think it's really snarky and very clever it's very entertaining if i had to compare this series to something that is not paranormal because i don't think that i can think of something paranormal that would compare i would say it's very similar to stephanie plum by janet ivanovich just think of that series but in a paranormal way and obviously with a lot more world building the next one is an ebook that I got from the publisher for Not Dead Yet by Jen Burke. This is a male male romantic suspense with some paranormal elements. One of the main characters is actually kind of a ghost. He died and now he's immortal, so I'm not really sure how that works. But he now is a witness to a murder and he has to work with his ex-boyfriend who is a detective assigned to the case. The next is an arc that I got from the publisher for The Charmer in Chaps by Julia London. I have not read Julia London before. This is about a bad boy cowboy and the heroine, she used to go, I think, to the same high school as him and she's lived in foster homes. Obviously, he has a bad reputation and she wants to stay away from that. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they come to interact in this book, but it does sound like a cute cowboy romance if you're looking for one and it does come out in May. So the next is an arc that I got from the publisher for the Time Collector by Gwendolyn Womack and this one sounds really interesting. I've never heard of this author before. The hero of the story has the ability to sense the history of any object he touches and him and his friend who also has the same ability have discovered certain objects that actually challenge recorded history from what they're sensing. His friend goes missing and he realizes that there's a lot of people with their ability that have gone missing in recent months. He comes across a YouTube video of a woman that has found an artifact that she was able to sense, so he decides that he has to warn her, although he may be too late for that. It sounds like a really interesting read and I'm really looking forward to checking it out. And this book comes out in April. Next up is an arc I got also from the publisher of It's Getting Scotten Here by Suzanne Enoch. I have not read this author before, but Annie here at Under the Covers really enjoys her writing. And this one sounds like a fun read. The heroine is a London socialite and she wants to marry a nice gentleman that likes the London social scene. And she ends up being attracted to this rough barbarian kind of Highlander who is looking for a wife but definitely not an English woman that hates the Highlands because that's what his father did and that didn't work out for him. The next book that I got is also from the publisher is 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. This is a finished copy and actually you can enter to win this copy right here in an interview that we have with Sally Thorne herself. Uh, let's see, let me try to figure this out. I'm filming this earlier so this video will be going up on February 9th and you have until February 10th to enter to win this copy. I will leave a link in the information box down below if you want to enter for this. But 99% Mine is the second book by Sally Thorne, who's the author of The Hating Game. And this is a friends to lovers story. The hero was the childhood best friend of the heroine and her twin. He grew up sort of across the street. He was always very involved with them in the family. He starts a relationship with the heroine when they're remodeling her grandmother's house together. The next one is an arc I got from the publisher, which I'm really excited about starting to read. I got this as a physical arc as well as an ebook from the publisher. It is for The Bride Test by Helen Huang. She's the author of The Kiss Quotient. This is kind of a, I guess, companion novel. I don't think she's marketing it as a series, but I think that the hero in this one was the cousin that we heard about in that book. The hero is Vietnamese, he's autistic, and his mom is trying to find him a good proper wife. So she travels to Vietnam to find him a bride and the heroine is actually a mixed race girl that was living in the slums in Vietnam. She gets an opportunity to come to America to find a husband and that would be the answer to her family's problems. 
back home. So I'm sure that this is going to be a really interesting read. I love how diverse it is and I can't wait to see these different kind of issues talked about in this book. So really looking forward to it and I loved Helen Hong's writing in The Kiss Quotient so I'm really looking forward to starting this one. Next up I had a coupon at some point from Amazon for physical books and I ended up picking up Ruckus by L.J. Shen and this is my favorite book in the Sinners of Saint series I think it's called. I already own Vicious but Vicious I bought it more because the cover was pretty. This one I actually really loved the book so couldn't pass up using my coupon and getting this at a discount. The next one is a women's fiction novel that I'm really excited to read and it's One Summer in Paris by Sarah Morgan. I have come to really enjoy Sarah Morgan's women's fiction novel, probably more so than her straight contemporary romance. So this story is about two women. One is actually going to celebrate her 25th wedding anniversary and her surprise for her husband is that she planned a trip to Paris and his surprise for her is that he wants a divorce. So she decides to go to Paris alone anyway, follow her dreams, find herself, and she ends up renting an apartment above a bookshop where her neighbor is a woman from London who is also dealing with some heartache of her own. She gets a job at a bookshop and they're both very different women. So while one is very adventurous, one is very guarded and safe and they both have a lot to learn from each other and this is a book about friendships and finding yourself so i'm really looking forward to reading this one next i got a finished copy from the publisher of the way you love me by miranda liaison so i've already read this book and i have my review up on the blog it's a sweet small town contemporary romance i probably enjoyed the side characters in this story a little more than the main couple but it's still a cute romance the hero is a single father he went through a divorce that left him a little shaken especially he ended up with writer's block from some of the drama that happened with his divorce so he's not writing anymore and he's instead teaching a class about writing and that's where he meets the heroine who's a lawyer but she's trying to find something to shake up her career because she doesn't think that she's doing what she's passionate about so she wants to try out writing and ends up falling for her professor. Next is a finished copy I also got from the publisher of Three Little Words by Jenny Holiday. This is the third book in the Bridesmaids Behaving Badly series. The heroine is a supermodel and the hero is a chef. He owns a restaurant in New York City and they both find themselves trying to get from New York to Florida for their friend's wedding. And there's really bad weather, all the flights are canceled and they end up having to actually drive from New York to Florida to make it to the wedding. I've also posted my review for this book on the blog if you're interested to check it out. Next up, a finished copy I got from the publisher of Playing for Keeps by Jill Chalvis. We have a review for this book on the blog. Annie already read it and reviewed it, but this is about a tattoo artist. She's a tattoo artist and the hero is a business model and they end up somehow co-adopting uh, a, a dog together. Next up, I got an ebook from the author for Motion by Penny Reed. This is coming out in February, I believe. I'm not sure the date. And it's the first in the Laws of Physics series. Now, the Laws of Physics will be a trilogy, and each book will end in a cliffhanger. So, full disclosure for that, you're not going to get a full story with Motion. And it's the same as the Hypothesis series so there's already one full trilogy that you can read this one is just starting out with motion and it just follows a very smart heroine she graduated high school at 15 she graduated college at 18 she started her phd and she ends up falling for her brother's best friend who's a musician next up on kindle unlimited i picked up and read Fake Out by Eden Finley. This is the first in the Fake Boyfriend series and it follows a hero who always thought he was straight but, but back when he wanted to move out of his hometown and he didn't want to get married to the girlfriend that he had been dating all throughout high school and that everybody thought they would end up together. So he thought it would be easier to tell her that he was gay instead of just saying he felt suffocated by having to be with her. So everybody in his small town thinks he's gay. He's moved to New York and in New York City he runs into this girl 
who invites him to her wedding and he accidentally tells her that he has a boyfriend so he ends up having to attend this wedding with his boyfriend and his best friend asks her brother who is gay to be the fake boyfriend and go with him to his small town and pretend for a weekend that they're together this was a cute read i will probably continue reading this series but you can check out also my review for this book on the blog Next up, I bought the audiobook for Atomic Habits by James Clear. This is a productivity book, kind of a self-help productivity book, and it was really interesting. I've already talked a little bit about it in my wrap-up video. I also bought the audiobook for The Leopard Prince by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is the second in the Princess Trilogy, and I read this book in January for Romanceopoly for Mayfair with the class disparity. Next up from the publisher, I got an arc of Hot to the Touch, by J.C. Burton. This is the first in her Firefighter series, which will be called A Brotherhood by Fire. Um, really excited about this series. J.C. Burton always writes amazing contemporary romances. Her play-by-play -play series is still one of my favorite sports romance series, and I can't wait to dive into her writing about firefighters. This is a second chance romance. The hero is a firefighter, and he has history with the heroine and his two brothers end up arranging for her to live with him while she's looking for a permanent place so it's kind of also a roommates to lovers and i'm just really excited to read it next up from the publisher i got a finished copy of the black ascot by charles todd this is a thriller, mystery thriller. It involves a Scotland Yard detective who gets a tip about a murder that happened during the Black Ascot horse race in the 1910. And that tip can lead him to finding a big crime lord. So he ends up not necessarily giving the information to his superiors and doing a cold case review of that event to try and bring in the murderer himself. The next one is a finished copy I got from the publisher of The Wrong Highlander by Lindsay Sands. And as kind of cheesy as the cover is, the story sounds like a lot of fun. So the heroine needs a healer for her father and she's heard that Rory Buchanan is a great healer. She finds him bathing at the waterfalls. She hits him over the head and drags him back to her land to heal her father, except she gets the wrong guy and actually she's dragged his brother. So I'm actually going to do my bookworm box subscription now because I'm doing things in order so I don't want to forget anything. So in the month of January, the Bookworm Box started also sending out ebooks with the subscription. So I have a two book subscription with them. So I got also two ebooks. So the two ebooks that I got through the subscription was Verity by Colleen Hoover, which is nice because I had actually borrowed that on Kindle Unlimited and I did purchase a print copy. So now I have the ebook as well. And also I got an ebook of The Ruthless Gentleman by Louise Bay. And that is actually one of the books that's also in the box in physical form, which I'm excited about because I've wanted to try Louise Bay before. So this could be my chance to do that. Now in the actual subscription box, we have a signed copy of Misadventures on the Night Shift by Lauren Rowe. And this is about a hotel clerk that works the night shift and a bad boy rocker. And like I said, The Ruthless Gentleman by Louise Bay. So this is about a chief stewardess in a luxury yacht. And the hero is a businessman, an English businessman. Obviously, clients are off limits. The heroine can't afford to lose her job. And last in this box, I got a third book. And that is Maybe Now by Colleen Hoover, which is also signed with a Maybe Now CD by Griffin P Peterson. Next up, I got a finished copy from the publisher of The Beast's Heart by Lee Shawcross. I think that's how you say her name. Hopefully I'm not butchering it. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling set in 17th century France, and it's actually told from the point of view of the beast. From the publicist, I got From Breath and Ruin by Carrie and Ryan. This is her YA fantasy debut, so usually she writes adult romance books, whether they're adult paranormal romance or adult contemporary romance. So this is her first fantasy and YA. And the series sounds really interesting. I'm really looking forward to trying this out. It's about a different realm that was separated into different factions 500 years ago. 
And now both of those factions are going into the human realm to find a prophecy spirit priestess. Next up, I got from the publisher a finished copy of Say You're Sorry by Karen Rose. I had actually gotten an ebook arc of this a couple of months ago. I didn't read it yet. It's a romantic thriller and this is thick. I didn't realize this was such a long book, but it's about a serial killer and he only leaves a letter usually identifying the kills as his and so far they've spelled Sydney. His latest victim actually escapes and she grabs one of his necklaces which is giving the special agents investigating this case a lead into an old cold case and now the killer is after the special agent and that woman that escaped. Next up is actually a finished copy of Polaris Rising by Jesse Mihalik and probably by the time this video goes up I'll have posted my review for this but it is the book that I am currently reading. It is a sci-fi. It's pretty heavy on romance and actually I'm surprised at how much I'm enjoying it. Obviously think of everything about like spaceships and jumping ships and the heroine is actually sort of like royalty and she's escaping her fate that her father wants her to marry the son of one of the other houses or royals for a political alliance. She doesn't want that for her future and she's sort of on the run. She ends up getting the aid of a guy that was in the military and is supposed to be a ruthless murderer who is also someone that's on the run and has a bounty on his head. Really enjoying this one so far. I didn't think I would be, but I'm sure by now my review will be posted on the blog by the time you guys watch this. The next one is a finished copy that I got from the publisher of The Matchmaker's List by Sonia Lali. This is about an Indian American community and the heroine actually decides to let her grandmother arrange a marriage for her. So this is all about those blind dates that they go on and all the matchmaking that happens and then obviously with some bad results because she's trying to get out of it. It sort of reminds me if you're looking for a contemporary romance with this trope that's already out. Rebel Heart by Nalini Singh is one that I definitely recommend, but I am really interested in checking this one out and seeing how it ends. I'm not quite sure if it's a straight contemporary romance or it's more of a chiclet, but it still sounds really fun and really interesting and I can't wait to dive into it. The next one is also a finished copy I got from the publisher of The Good Ones by Jen McKinley. This is the first in a new series. The heroine is an English teacher and she inherits a Victorian house from her great aunt and she decides to turn it into a bookstore. And to do that, she's hired the hero of the story to do the remodeling, which is the last job that he decides to take on before him and his daughter leave the small town. He's a single father. It sounds like a really cute read. I think there's some kitties also, cute kitty on the cover. So if you're into small town contemporary romances with single fathers and cute little animals, you might enjoy this one. Next up I got an arc from the publisher of I Want You Back by Lorelai James. This is going to be I think a spin-off from the Need You series, maybe it's going to be the I Want You, I think the Want You series, but we've definitely met these characters in the Need You series. He is cousins I think with the Lund family from that series, former NHL player, and this is the story of him reconnecting with his baby mama. Also from the publisher I got a finished copy of Vengeance Road by Christine Feehan. This book is already out, I have not read the series, this is the second book in the Torpedo Inc. series and it's motorcycle romance. The heroine was born into the MC and she's now out and the hero is currently the vice president and he did some pretty bad things from what I gather in order for her to be pushed out and to want to leave but now she's back, she needs help and he won't let her leave twice. Also from the publisher, I got a finished copy of One Tough Cowboy by Laura Lee and Veronica Chatwick. I am actually pretty interested to read this one because uh, from what I remember, if I'm correct, Laura Lee and Veronica Chatwick are sisters. At least I have this vague recollection of that being talked about at one of Laura Lee's events, but I could be wrong. 
This is the first in a new contemporary romance series. Both of these authors write really hot, steamy books. And the hero is actually, I think, the heroine's childhood sweetheart. So he always used to protect her from bullying and all this stuff when they were kids. And now he's the town sheriff and something is going on in their small town. He has to keep her safe again. So I guess it's kind of a second chance story as well. But small town cowboy sheriff and I'm sure steamy. On Kindle Unlimited, I borrowed Unchained by Shane Silvers. This is the first in the Feathers and Fire series. It's an urban fantasy series. I am going to be totally honest, I picked this up because the cover looks really good. And the heroine is a wizard in training. I like the fact that it seems like the organization that she's working for or her mentor works for an organization that's sort of like a church so they're Vatican shepherds they're called and he's the one training her to learn about her powers it sounds like this series has a little bit of everything shifters vampires wizards and demons and I can't wait to see what this is all about and try out this author I've heard a lot of great things about his writing also from the publisher I got an ebook copy of fix her up by Tessa Bailey Tessa Bailey is an author that's sort of hit or miss for me, but this one is a romantic comedy instead of her more erotic books. The trope here is best friend sister and the heroine, while her family owns a big remodeling company in town, she decided to plan children's party for a living instead. She wants to prove to everybody that she's more than the girl that just paints kids' faces and she decides what better way to do that than to go out with the resident bad boy sports star and he's actually her brother's best friend. Used to play professional baseball but an injury sidelined him so he's now retired and he's flipping houses in town. It sounds like a really fun premise and I can't wait to read it. The next one is an ebook that I bought myself and it's The Next Competitor by Kira Andrews. So I was looking for male male romance with a figure skating lead and this one was recommended to me by a friend whom I trust her recommendation so I'm really excited to get started reading it. It is a wintry kind of feel read for me. So that's what I'm in the mood for so I'm really excited to pick it up. We have one of the main characters who's an Olympic hopeful and he trains day and night fully focused on getting that gold medal and he ends up falling for his training partner, his new training partner, which to him is really weird because that is totally not his type because he's very wholesome and that's not what he usually goes for. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. It's sort of what I'm in the mood to read right now. So I will probably pick it up really soon. And last but certainly not least, on the last day of January, I got The Devil's Daughter by Lisa Claypass. And this is a finished copy that I got from the publisher. I had already gotten the ebook arc a couple of months ago and I actually read it in January, which I loved and I'm so happy this is in my hands. This comes out February 19th, so definitely put it on your list. I love the book. I already talked about it pretty much everywhere, but I talked about it in my wrap-up. I put it as one of my top shelf recommendations for February on the blog. I've talked about it on Instagram. So I'm I've basically talked about this book everywhere. I loved Wes Ravenel. I love the fact that this features some of the Wallflowers and it does have a good connection to that series if you're a fan of that series. Definitely Lisa Claypass is a must-read historical romance author and this one might be my favorite in the series. And we have now reached the end of my book haul. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching. And now I have the giveaway for you guys. So this giveaway is international. There will be a link in the information box down below for you guys to go to enter. And what I'm giving away is a bundle of books from what I've mentioned today. And that is these five books. So you will get a copy of Vengeance Road by Kristen Feehan, Playing for Keeps by Jill Shalvis, The Way You Love Me by Miranda Lazon, Three Little Words by Jenny Holiday. And the Wrong Highlander by Lindsay Sands. All your romance needs satisfied. So all of these will go to one winner 
and just look in the information box down below on how to enter. I hope that you found something that was interesting to you in all these books that I talked about. I will also leave links in the information box down below for all the links so that you can read the blurbs or read more about them. I'm sure I did probably a terrible job at explaining some of them and I'm sorry. I am trying to make these videos not as long but I know they are extremely long. There's too many books to talk about. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our videos. Visit us on the blog at undercoversbookblog.com and all our social media channels all the links will be in the information box down below as well thank you so much for watching guys and we'll see you again in the next one bye